And then up above, here are the rest of the month tubs. So we have December, January, this one is February, March, and that one is April, May. And then the word wall, all the words are up for the year, so you don't really have to do anything with that. Um, also up at the top, some more extra materials. You can look at the labels and just use whatever you need. Um, there's a lot of little goodies up there. And then behind the cabinets is kind of a crazy craziness. This cabinet is all of the tissues, Ziplocs, baby wipes, and disinfecting wipes. So everything in, of that nature is in this cabinet. This cabinet has all of the crafts and sort of um, like extra materials, some science supplies. Um, it's I know it looks like craziness, so I apologize for that. But basically crafts, anything I need for projects goes in here. Um, this box has all of my letters for like bulletin boards or something hanging in the hall. I keep all those in there. And then this one has, again, kind of a random assortment of things. There's extra chair pockets up there. There's extra like containers that I don't use. These are the monthly books that were on display. So let's see, they're separated by rulers. And this one separates September. And then here's my, this is where my November section starts. So you can imagine when it's time, I'll put my October books right back in here and exchange them for my November books. And then it just keeps going. We've got all my December, Christmas, Hanukkah, um, all those types of books. And then January starts and it's like penguins and Martin Luther King and all that stuff. And then February, we've got a lot of Abe Lincoln, um, Valentine's Day. And then 101st Day usually comes in February, so all my 101 books. And then we get into like March with all my spring, spring books. So this is my um, author of the week section or any books I wanna use during like a class meeting. If I wanna um, do a writer's workshop or something like that, I'll tuck them up here. But I haven't really been great about remembering they're there. This cabinet is all the kids extra supplies, like the ones that I collect. So there are some extra folders, extra glue. This box has a ton of extra pencils, uh, class, basically class sets. So a class set of notebooks. There's more index cards and post-its than I can even tell you what to do with. The class set of watercolors is up there. And then whenever they do watercolors, I give them a little cup to keep their water in class sets of markers, just um, a lot of stuff, erasers, you get it. And then in this last little cabinet, I keep all of the kids' individual supplies in a Ziploc baggie. So this year when they run out of glue, I come over to their baggie and I actually get one of their own glue sticks out. And so um, if their parents did not write their name on all of their supplies, I wrote their class number. And so everybody has a glue stick with a number on it, and that way when it rolls on the ground, we know whose it is. And I am very much a stickler about this. I do not just give them a random glue stick. I really want them to be accountable. Um, so all of their extra supplies are up here. I keep their colored pencils in here. I didn't pass those out because I just, it leads to a lot of pencils that need to be sharpened and materials on the ground and the whole thing. So um, those are all still in their little baggies. And I would say at semester, like when they come back from winter break, that's when I would trade out their crowns and their markers. If they brought new ones, then they could get new ones out of, then I would pass out the new ones. Um, again, so the math materials are up there. These are calculators. This is just like a little caddy that they stay in. And we don't even use calculators in first grade, but if we needed them, that's where they are. This is a class set of dominoes. Um, these are the math toolkits, which I really don't use very often. This is the library box where they keep 
their library books when they return them. This is a little poster to build um, teamwork. So you can see that each group has a color. So this is the it's supposed to be the red group, but they don't have red. So it's pink, but basically red. And so I would say like, oh, red group, you are all so focused. Way to go. Go give yourselves a soccer ball. So then they would get a soccer ball. And then the orange group is tennis and they are right in the middle. And then over on the left, we have yellow group. And um, so you can see each group has their own sport. So yellow is football and the, all the little uh, Velcro sticker things are in this little random little cup someone gave me once upon a time. So then I'd have, I'd tell someone, oh, you know, whoever it is, Nickel, go give yourselves a football because you guys are all so focused right now. And so when they, with whatever group gets to the championship, when they reach the championship, they get to go to the treasure chest, the whole group. So that's what that is. And when the groups are in arrangements like this, there's actually six groups right now. So I use the team six and there's hockey pucks for them. But most of the time there's only five groups and we just ignore the purple group. So that leads us back to the very, very beginning. Um, this file cabinet, I keep um, just some of my old files, although mostly everything is online now. But um, just extra resources if you need them are in there. Really the bottom drawer is probably the only one I use at this point. This is where I keep the monthly things. So in social studies, like if I want to incorporate some nonfiction stuff and it goes chronologically. So it starts with um, school safety, like the beginning of the year. And then my October stuff is all out right now. So this is like fire safety, 50th day of school, and then it jumps to November, which is like elections, Native Americans, um, nutrition, which we don't even teach anymore, pioneers, and then we get into December. And so any of this stuff, you are absolutely welcome to go through December morning work, um, gingerbread day, winter holidays, January morning work. It's just all right in there. And there's some projects and cute stuff. But um, again, there's just so many things online now that I don't use it a ton. This is the star student board. So Marissa's the star and there's her poster. Let's see, lunch cards I keep in the little pocket chart. This star student stool is for the star to, um, I guess, scoot over to the middle of the room when they have something to show and tell and sit on. But honestly, I <laughs> took all this work done, all this student work down, and I have, have it right there by the door so that at the end of the day, I can pass it out before they leave. And then this little box I'm going to put away, but I've had it out because we've been making collages. And that's just where I keep all my magazines and catalogs for the kids to use for collage making. So I think that's about it. Oh, on the back of the door, you can see the student teacher lanyards for centers. They're kind of um, raggedy right now, but that's where those are. And then I also keep a little line order list up here. So... When we line up, I can make sure everybody's in the right spot. And um, this little thing I use sometimes, if I can remember it, to put on the front of my door. When we take a test, I'll hang it on the front. But, you know, sometimes I forget and it just stays there. So I think that's just about it. Um, that's a very brief version of my classroom tour. Oh, I just realized I didn't open these cabinets back here. Let me do that really fast. These cabinets have some of my professional materials. So this one has supplement, supplemental work in um, science and social studies up there. This one, it's extra binders, extra page protectors, transparencies, um, and then all of my notebooks that I've ordered through print shop over the years. These are like the master copies, which again, you are welcome to reprint and order again. Some yearbooks, old plan books. Um, I really don't get into these cabinets very often. Well, this one, I would say I don't get into very often. The one on this side, on the other side of my easel, that weighs 
a thousand pounds. Um, I keep my extra reading and math materials, and this one I actually do use very frequently. So the top shelf is all math, and the bottom shelf is all reading, and the top shelf is where I keep the math mats and the tests, the quick checks, the daily common core reviews, anything from print shop for the topic, I keep all up here, and then the teacher manuals are over there. And then right here on the bottom shelf, I've got extra reading materials and I don't use these a ton but I do use my humongous reading assessment binder this is where I keep all of their um, tests and then I also have a map assessment binder and that's where I keep all their map test information and I'll touch on my reading assessment binder more in a reading video but the map assessment binder, I don't use a ton. It's mostly just when we're doing a map test. Um, I keep their printouts and any information in there. So that is where that all goes. Okay, I think now that I'm looking around, I've covered most of it. So that's it. Thank you.